Welcome to Inside Gaming, I'm Brian. It's weekend roundup time. Let's talk about some good news for a change, guys. Half-Life Alex coming out March 23rd. Yes! Yes! Now I just need a VR set and a PC that can handle it. Uh, actually, that's not the story today. Let's talk about Disney, the company that ate all your favorite characters and ruined some franchises. A little bit. Not as good, you know what I'm talking about. Well, maybe something good is coming out of all this because Disney now says that it's totally cool with game developers using its giant trove of intellectual properties. Did they get hit on the head or something? This is not the Disney, I know. But that includes not just Disney characters, but you know what Disney owns? Everything, Star Wars, Marvel, Pixar, the 20th Century catalog, formerly known as 20th Century Fox. Is this a trap? It feels like a trap because Disney, they have been in the video game business in the past. These days, they're pretty much done making games internally. I guess this means no Epic Mickey 3. That's a bummer for me. At the 2020 Dice Summit this week though, Disney Senior VP for Games, Sean Shoptaw, told a crowd of developers that I'm here for one specific reason, to empower you to do really unique things with our characters. We want to tap into the power of creatives across the industry. He specifically pointed to really successful games like Marvel Spider-Man, Jedi Fallen Order. He talked about developers basically reimagining Disney characters and settings. Pretty much seems like they've seen success of games like Fallen Order and want to do more of that. Also, I'm kind of wondering, is that a hint? EA Star Wars license might be about to expire. Please let it expire. Anyway, Shop Ta invited the audience to come and play with Disney's characters, creepy, and added, we want to dream big and look forward to all the things we can do together. Now, again, this is a pretty big departure for Disney, typically very protective of its stuff. One exception though, of course, the Kingdom Hearts franchise from Square Enix, which mixed Final Fantasy characters with Disney favorites like Mickey, Donald, and Goofy. Side note, did you know that Disney would only let Square Enix use Mickey in one scene in the first Kingdom Hearts? That's how anal they used to be. Speaking of Kingdom Hearts, Square Enix said lately, Disney has been great. Kingdom Hearts 3 producer Shinji Hashimoto was quoted as saying, the Disney Pixar team have provided invaluable support in helping us realize realize our creative visions through this beloved saga. Okay, but are they being really this generous with this IP? Because there was a report out this week that said Sora from Kingdom Hearts was being considered as a fighter in Super Smash Ultimate. Guess who blocked it? Disney Japan. That's according to Imran Khan of Kinda of Funny, who said Nintendo absolutely approached Disney about it once, but Disney Japan killed it. Now maybe that was before Disney's new openness policy about their characters, but still, let's make that happen, guys. Come on. That's one way you can let the fans know that Disney is finally being cool about this stuff. Just an idea. We Come on, put Sora in there. It, it, that feels like a mistake to not have Sora in. All right, moving on. It looks like the System Shock 3 remake is in big, big trouble because it sounds like most, if not all the team is gone. And I'm no rocket scientist, but that seems like a really bad sign. Video Games Chronicle reported that the game's writer and director, lead programmer, design director, and others have all left director Other Side Entertainment in the last five months. Who do they think they are? Inside Gaming? Jeez. <laughs> And it's worse than that. They also quoted an anonymous developer who said the entire team is now no longer employed at Other Side. Now, the remake has had a bunch of trouble when it comes to finding its forever publisher. Last year, its original publisher, Starbreeze Studios, sold the rights of the game back to Other Side because. Starbreeze is kind of a dumpster fire right now. It's just a big mess. Then Warren Spector, who was the game's creative director, said they were in talks of getting a new publisher, but it's been a year now. It sounds like that hasn't happened. It's a bummer, because Spector showed off footage of the game at GDC 2019 last April. Sadly, it looked it looked promising, but it sounds like it's done for. I don't know, it's bad. In happier news, the creator of Stardew Valley is making two new Stardew Valley related games. Hell yes, see, that's the secret. Just make everything yourself. You don't have to worry about running a studio. It might take 50 years, but you make it all yourself. It gets done. Eric Barone, AKA Concerned Ape, mentioned it offhandedly on Twitter when someone asked him if he's planning to make a new game in the Stardew Valley universe. He responded, yes, I'm actually working on a couple of new projects. One takes place in the world of Stardew Valley, but this is not a farming game. The other, I'm not 100% sure about the world yet, but it will tie into Stardew Valley in some way. Of course, 
That promptly blew up. He later wrote, all I ask is please don't get too hyped at this stage. I want to avoid too much hype or speculation. I'd like to just make whatever games comes naturally to me without too much pressure or expectation. Good luck, dude. You made Stardew Valley. There's going to be pressure and expectation. He concluded by saying, I'm not setting out to make the next indie smash hit. I just want to make another game that I enjoy and I'm happy with and to share some of my art and ideas with the world. If it becomes popular, I'll be happy, but that's not my focus. Man, you already made the indie smash hit. So go whatever makes you happy, dude. That's what you get to do when you're a millionaire. You get to be happy. He told IGN that both projects are single player, top down 2D games with pixel art styles. Mwah, sounds good to me. Perfect. Go make it. Sony made headlines last year when it acquired developer Insomniac Games, best known for the PS4 Spider-Man game that was very, very good. Well, now we know how much Sony paid for the studio. This is from a filing made with the US Securities and Exchange Commission. Sony shelled out $229 million for Insomniac. Honestly, I have no concept for that. It seems like a lot. I don't, I, I will never see it. A tenth, it's a lot of money. Hopefully everyone at Insomniac was taken care of. We assume they're working on the next Spider-Man game for Sony, but they also have had an impressive list of franchises that they've started. Spyro the Dragon, Ratchet and Clank, Resistance, of course, Sunset Overdrive, which was great. Can we get a sequel to that? Uh, they're probably working on Spider-Man. Need for Speed is going back to its old home. EA told GamesIndustry.biz that they're moving the franchise back to the UK studio Criterion. Previously, the last four Need for Speed games were made by the Swedish studio Ghost Games, but EA says that studio is going to refocus as an engineering hub. They're going to support development all across EA. They told Games Industry that the engineering expertise in our Gothenburg team, some of whom are architects of the Frostbite engine is vital to a number of our ongoing projects and they would remain in that location. AKA, they're the only ones who know how to use Frostbite. So we need them for like everything. Some of the creatives at Ghost Games could get transferred to Criterion, but 30 jobs reportedly remain at risk. Criterion, of course, created the Burnout series. They also made Need for Speed Hot Pursuit and Need for Speed Most Wanted. All right, time for a five second review. Damn, I need to start going to church. Whew. All right, let's talk about games that are coming up next week. First up is Corruption 2029. It's a new tactical strategy game from the bearded ladies, creators of Mutant Year Zero Road to Eden. Use your supreme tactical abilities, command a squad of heavily augmented units deep in enemy territory to discover the cause of the corruption. Corruption 2029 is a hardcore tactical game. It's set in a dystopian America in the not too distant future that should test the mettle of even the most experienced tactical gamers. It's coming to the Epic Game Store February 17th. Hunt Showdown is a competitive first person PVP bounty hunting game with PVE elements from the makers of Crisis. Set in the darkest corners of the world, it packs the thrill of survival games into a match based format. Savage, nightmarish monsters roam the Louisiana swamps, and you are part of a group of rugged bounty hunters bound to rid the world of their ghastly presence. Banish these creatures from our world, and you'll be paid generously and given the chance to buy more gruesome and powerful weapons fail and death will strip you of both your character and your gear. Oh, that hurts. Hunt's competitive matchmaking gameplay, it mixes PVP and PVE elements to create a uniquely tense experience where your life, your character, and your gear are always on the line. Sounds like Ultima Online. At the beginning of each bounty hunt match, up to 12 players set out to track their targets. Hunt's quick play game mode, it offers a shorter match during which up to 10 individual players race to scavenge gear and find and close four rifts as they compete for a diminishing pool of bounty. First hunter to the final rift absorbs its energy, but must survive the final countdown to complete the mission while the other hunters attempt to take them out and take the prize for themselves. When the timer runs out, the winner keeps their hunter while the rest perish. It's been out on PC, but it's coming to the PS4 February 18th. Commemorate the 10th anniversary of Platinum Games' 
two most celebrated titles with the Bayonetta and Vanquish Remastered Dual Pack. Experience the genesis of the Bayonetta series with the cult classic original action adventure game. Take advantage of Bayonetta's arsenal of skills to hack, slash, and open fire upon hordes of celestial foes. Play as DARPA agent Sam Gideon in the hit sci-fi shooter Vanquish. Equipped with Blade, the experimental weapon system that can scan and copy existing weapons, kind of sounds like Green Lantern, he must infiltrate conquered space colony Providence and defeat legions of future tech enemies. It comes to PS4 and Xbox One February 18th. Next up, Devil May Cry 3 Special Edition. Set before the events of the original Devil May Cry, this action classic sees Dante facing off against his twin brother, Virgil, who has designs on unlocking a gate to the demonic realm to which Dante himself holds the key, featuring selectable combat styles such as Swordmaster and Gunslinger. Devil May Cry 3 brings an extra level of strategy to the series' renowned stylish gameplay. This edition features all the special edition content, including the ability to play as Virgil, and even includes extra bonus features exclusive to the Switch. It's coming to the Switch February 20th. Dungeon Defenders Awakened is a cooperative action RPG tower defense game that brings loot, leveling pets, and a character customization to a legendary four-player co-op experience. Choose your hero and construct an epic defense to fight off hordes of enemies while you jump into the fray to protect Etheria. Team up with up to four players as you level up, claim legendary loot, and take on armies of enemies that await you. Master the Squire, Huntress, Apprentice, and Monk to fight off any enemy that approaches, build and utilize their arsenal of blockades, towers, traps, and auras to keep the Eternia Crystal safe. The only requirement is to win, but it's up to you to choose how. Everything about Dungeon Defenders Awakened is chosen by you. The gear you use, the way your hero looks, where you build your defenses, which defenses to build. You are the master of your own destiny in Etheria. It's coming to Steam Early Access February 21st. That's it. That's all the news we've got for you this week. Hope you guys have a great weekend. We'll see you soon. Bye. That's because Knights of the Old Republic is back in the news again. Ooh, kind of. Yeah, Cinelix recently reported on a leak that says a remake or a sequel or both of the classic Star Wars RPG is in fact in the works over at EA. Ooh, I'm excited. This could be really bad news though, for the <laughs> franchise, considering EA has a reputation of putting its Star Wars games in the toilet and just kind of 